Rogers. He's a retired lieutenant detective for the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department, also a former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. You know, we don't know a lot about this guy. He was apparently not on police radar, but he was fairly active on social media. I've seen some of the posts, and, and there was a lot of anti-Semitic ranting and raving there. Is that not something that should have tipped somebody off? Well, I'll tell you what a uh, controversy now cr being created over First Amendment rights versus possible threats to people. John, that's something law enforcement is going to have to think about as we move forward. And the responsibility of corporate America flagging some of these things on the Internet and providing uh, law enforcement with possible tips that something could be happening. Very controversial, but it's something that might have to change the rules of engagement of law enforcement investigators as they move forward. Well, you're allowed to say just about anything in this country as, as as long as you're not yelling fire in a crowded theater, right? Well, yes, you're right, uh, but we've said all along, from President Trump all the way down to all of the officials that we've heard this week, if you see something, say something. And uh, as you and I have talked a lot about these things, it's usually after the incident that someone comes forward and said, you know, I saw something on the Internet. It just didn't sit right with me. Well, when you see something, say something. It's so rare that these mass shooters are taken alive. And in this case, uh, he was. So police are going to be able to interrogate him, find out what he thought he was accomplishing. John, you talk about hero cops. I mean, here's cops under fire, and they managed to take this guy alive. And you know what was important about that? When you have a human being who's alive, who's a killer like that, you have the greatest evidence in the world right there. They needed to talk to him to find out if there's anyone else involved. Where'd you get the guns? There's a treasure trust of evidence that he has in his mind. The um, attorney general is out with a statement. He says the, the Department of Justice will file hate crimes and other criminal charges against him, including charges that could lead to the death penalty. Would you guess this will be a, a federal uh, prosecution or a state prosecution? It will be a federal prosecution because of the na nature of it being a hate crime. And with the president now, earlier, by the way, uh, providing all the resources that they needed to get this done and to get this investigation to a point where it will be a federal crime, the answer to that question is, yep, hate crime. Uh, it, he, he sounds to me, I mean, from the description of what took place today, he sounds to me like something of a coward. He goes to a synagogue armed to the teeth with a number of handguns as well as this, you know, assault rifle, AR-15 type rifle, um, shoots a bunch of people and then starts to leave. But when he sees the, cop co the cops coming, that's when he runs back inside and, and they went straight after it. They're all cowards. Every single one of them are cowards. And to do what the, this guy did, let that not be a, a signal for someone else to try to sub by something like that. Because as you said, the police were there. God bless those cops yeah. were there as fast as they were. Yeah. But the, this kind of thing, I mean, we've seen the pipe bombs this week that were mailed. Didn't explode, obviously. Um, but now you've got another kind of hate crime. Are, are there fears among law enforcement that this is going to inspire copycats? You always worry about copycats. This is why the people of our country need to be vigilant. If they see something going on in a home, maybe a friend or a neighbor acting strangely, please make that phone call because you may end up saving a lot of lives. Steve Rogers, thanks for your expertise. You're welcome. We are awaiting President Trump's speech.